Hello, I just wanted to make a little intro to the intro as I'm gonna continue editing this video. Um, also, I apologize if you can hear my family downstairs. They talk very loudly. But I just wanted to kind of give an update and explain that I'm sorry things have gotten a little off schedule. Um, it's the end of the quarter, things have gotten hectic, I keep falling behind, and the more I fall behind, the more I can't catch up. And long story short, I'm just very burnt out. And I'm trying my best to, like, have the energy to make videos consistently, because it's like, it's been a goal of mine since since last summer. But, yeah, I promise I'm not being lazy, I promise I'm not forgetting about this, it's just that I'm burnt out and sometimes I don't always have energy to do anything or to be creative, so, yeah. That's all. Hello and good afternoon. I'm sorry it's been a while that I've been able to make like a, a decent video, especially with my craft videos. I haven't really had time to dedicate to do a craft that I really want to do. The good news is, well, it's because of school, but that's not the good news. The good news is that I'm approaching the end of this quarter, so I've kind of already reached the, the tippy top of difficulty and now it's all downhill from here. So the next few weeks I think I'll be able to dedicate more time to doing crafts. All right, so let's get straight into what we're doing today. We're going to make a craft that's very easy and very affordable. We're making roller skate felt toe patches. They don't necessarily need to go on roller skates, they basically just need to go on anything with a lace that you could lace through the patch or like anything that's similar to a lace, like even a strap that's this wide. It really all depends on how you make it. Um, I've always just used these or made these to go on roller skates, but you can use them for whatever you want. So what you'll need for this project is felt. If you've never used felt before, the good news is that it's very easy to work with for people of all ages and it's also very affordable. They typically come in like 8 by 10 or 9 by 12, something like that, um, sheets for about 30 to 50 cents each. I have accumulated quite a good felt collection, so I'm using the felt that I already have. You'll also need scissors to cut the felt. Optional is something to mark the felt with. You don't necessarily need these. You could just like freehand cut it, but I tried that last time and it was a little bit annoying, so it's better if you have something to mark it with, such as fabric markers or even like white or black charcoal pencils. The only thing I wouldn't recommend is like a, an inky pen that will bleed through. Because even if you mark it on the back, like last time I tried using Sharpie and I marked it on the back, but it bled through and you know, it's not like the Sharpie's gonna dissolve over time compared to a fabric pen, which will. So just don't use pens like that. And then lastly is the glue. I've had so much beef with Gorilla Glue. So I'm not going to recommend Gorilla Glue, but maybe I also will because I've used Gorilla Glue pretty much every time I've made this, um, or I've made these patches and it works. But the reason that I don't like Gorilla Glue is because you will buy a bottle that's this big or this big for however much money. You'll use like this much and then the rest of it will just harden inside the bottle. Or like not necessarily the whole thing, but the top of it where the cap is will harden and then there's no way of fixing it because, you know, the cap is just glued shut. So Gorilla Glue has been pissing me off. We have Elmer's Glue as a backup, but I did, I did buy Gorilla Glue because it's tried and true to work for this craft. But I bought the smaller little bottle so that I'm not wasting so much glue that dries inside the bottle. You don't have to use either of these glues. If you have a glue that you know works for you, that you like, that might be similar to these glues in like consistency and strength, you can go ahead and use whatever glue you want to. Oh, and another optional supply is acrylic paint. If you want to like paint on top of your felt design to like enhance whatever you're making, um, you can use acrylic paint to do that. Okay, step number one is just to draw out your design. You could do whatever you want, and I'm gonna make a strawberry for one of the toe patches, and then a flower for the other. Alright, 
I have my very simple designs drawn out. So basically what I'm thinking is this general like circular shape is gonna be red. This spiky shape is green. All these dots I'm just gonna paint on with acrylic paint. And then I think for the flower I wanna do like purple um, petals and then a pink center. Once you have your designs and you know what colors you want them to be, you can go ahead and cut them out in felt. Once you've cut out your shapes and everything looks good, the next step is to like hold them against your skates or whatever you're putting them on just to make sure they're the right size because you know, once you start to glue everything together, there's not really any going back. Also if you've made it too small, there's also no going back so you're just going to have to start over at this point, but if you've made them too big, you can at least, you know, trim down and get them to the size that you want them to be. Ignore how dirty my skates look. But my plan is to put the red one on the orange and then the purple and pink on the blue because I think those colors will look cute. And they're looking pretty good. I feel like I'm very experienced in making these toe patches so I know, I know what size I want them to be. So yeah, they're pretty good and now I just have to start gluing everything together. Another thing you can do that's optional to really make your design pop is to glue it to another like neutral piece of felt and then cut around that like bubble cut around your shape because then it'll be on a white background rather than like on your dirty muted colors of your skates. Um, I'm not going to do that but I've definitely done that in the past so that's something that you can do if you want to. As much as Gorilla Glue pisses me off, I think I'm going to try this one. I don't know if this is supposed to be the same like consistency as like the normal Gorilla Glue. If it's not, if it's a lot thinner like super glue tends to be, then I'm not gonna use this one. There's no little stabby thing on the cap, so I'm trying to figure out what to sacrifice in case it gets all glooped up in Gorilla Glue. <gasps> oh my god! No! It was just a joke! Uh, get off of me! <laughs> Everything's a mess! Okay. <laughs> That really squirted out. I'm gonna try to use the glue that just fell out. Okay, we're gluing this. We're gluing this. All right, we glued the pieces of the design together. Now the last step pretty much is just to glue a piece of felt onto the back that's gonna have an opening that will allow us to like put the lace of the um, roller skate through there. So keep in mind that nobody's going to see this piece of felt. Like the color might be a little bit noticeable if someone's like really down by your feet or something, but it doesn't matter too much. I still probably wouldn't mind using a color that doesn't go with this. That's vastly different from this, but because we already use like the colors of this design, I'm just going to go ahead and stick to using the same color. If you did run out of the same color, then it's totally fine to use a completely different color. So for this part, we're going to want to flip our patches over, and depending on the glue that you used, be careful because if your glue needs like a little bit more time to dry, then let it dry so it doesn't get stuck to your table. Then we're going to come in with a piece of felt, usually like a rectangle or trapezoid or similar shape. And then we're just going to make sure that it's cut small enough so that you can't see it from the front. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. 
So for the strawberry, it looks like we're going with a little bit of a trapezoid shape because that's what works well for the strawberry. And again, whatever you're going to put this felt patch on, just keep that in mind when you're thinking about how big to make this. You don't want to make it too small because then you're, you won't be able to lace it through nicely. But if you make it too big, then there's a lot of room for like the lace to wiggle around inside of it and it won't be as secure. And then one important thing to note is just make sure it's like the correct orientation. So I have my strawberry facing up and down, but for example, if you wanted to have your strawberry diagonal, then just make sure that you put this, you know, in a way that aligns with it so that when you flip it over, it's diagonal. And we'll do the same thing for the flower. Okay, when you've cut out the back pieces and you've arranged them so that you know how high or how low you want the felt patch to sit, um, what orientation you want them to be, if you want it to be like vertical or horizontal or diagonal, then it's time to start gluing. That didn't go so smoothly, so I think I'm gonna let them sit for five to ten minutes and then try and see if it worked out. Okay, I gave them a few minutes to sit and then I tried putting my scissors through them just to make sure that the middle wasn't glued together. Hold on. And there we have it, not glued together. Same thing with the flower, I tried doing that and it looks like it's all good. Okay, so this one says wait 24 hours to cure as well, which I'm pretty sure is the same as like the thicker brown Gorilla Glue. But compared to that one, just a few minutes after gluing it together, it feels mostly dry unless I press really hard. So I think I'll be able to put this on my skates in like 10 to 20 minutes. And while I'm waiting for them to dry a little bit more, I'm gonna paint the yellow dots on this strawberry. Maybe think if there's something else I could paint on this one too. the cutest things ever. I'm so obsessed with how these turned out and I'm not even trying to like kiss my own butt but I think these are the best patches that I've ever made or to be fair it's probably also because the last time that I put toe patches on I only had yellow um, toe covers and then I eventually painted them like a cow print but I feel like it just looks so much more interesting because there's so much more color from the two different colored toe covers. And so all together with all the different colors, like the yellow, orange, red, blue, purple, pink, it just looks really cute and very me. I'm so happy with how it turned out and I love this craft so much because it's so easy to do, requires so little materials, and again, it's just a very accessible craft to everybody because the materials are so cheap. And I know I'm calling these roller skate patches um, because I use them on my roller skates, but you can really use this for anything. Like you can even use this to lace on a little garland that you can hang in your room or put them on regular sho shoes if you want to just like jazz up your normal shoes. You can put these on a belt, on the strap of a fanny pack or like a purse or something. There really is no limit to your imagination. Is that, is that a phrase? I feel like I said that phrase wrong. The, the only limit is your imagination, is what I meant. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. I hope I explained it well, because it, it is truly an easy craft. Maybe I'm just not explaining it 
the best way. I tend to over explain and under explain when needed, like when the information is needed. Does that make sense? Well, I hope I didn't do that in this video, and if I did, I hope you figured out any confusion that I may have caused. Thank you so much for watching this video once again, and I will see you next time. Bye!